Halo Halo fans, Halo Theorist here, coming at you guys with another Halo Theory video. Recently, I have listened to Hunt the Truth audio series again and have started asking myself a pretty interesting question. Will ONI pay for all its crimes that it's committed? Before I go any further into the video, I would like to give fair warning that my videos contain spoilers and possibly future spoilers for the Halo franchise, so please watch at your own risk. Also, if you have not listened to Hunt the Truth audio series, I strongly recommend you listen to it even if you have never listened to audiobooks or anything of the sort. It is an extremely well put together series with incredible voice actors and everything good about Halo. As a fair warning for this as well, I will be mentioning huge Hunt the Truth spoilers in this video, so again, please proceed at your own risk. Now moving on, for anyone who has played Halo 4 and 5, they have heard of the term ONI, or Office of Naval Intelligence. This is a group that is compromised of multiple sections, some much more unlawful than others, and is responsible for the overall intelligence for humanity in the Halo universe. Jameson Locke, the fire team leader of Osiris and one of the main characters in Halo 5, was an Oni hitman who eliminated important targets Oni deemed necessary to kill before he ever became a Spartan. Even though he is now a Spartan, he still bears the Oni insignia on his armor. This is somewhat pointed out in the Halo 5 campaign by the Arbiter who clearly knows of Oni's notorious reputation even though he is not part of humanity. This all being said, ONI's reputation is one that almost all soldiers know and keep in mind when dealing with them. So much so that during the Human Covenant War, the rumors spread that the Spartan IIs were unnatural freaks. This can be seen in the book Halo, when Master Chief is called a freak by a superior officer while on the first Halo ring. For those of you who don't know, the Spartan II and Spartan III programs were both originated and funded by ONI. While the entire organization itself did not commit the atrocities to the abducted kids in the Spartan II program, they did have some knowledge of what was going on and continued to fund the project. After seeing the results of the Spartan II program, a few ONI officers came together to secretly train and deploy new Spartans who were much cheaper trying to make the same effect as the Spartan IIs or to be sent on suicide missions to achieve needed goals. These soldiers were known as the Spartan Threes and were very similar to the Spartan Twos. However, all of the kids recruited into the program's parents were dead from the Human Covenant War. These kids were also given somewhat of a choice at the beginning of their training to become a soldier and fight the Covenant. This being said, it still does not justify training children as soldiers to be sent on suicide missions or to be sent in a battle at such a young age. These are just some examples of the inhumane and unjustifiable acts that Oni committed during the Human Covenant War. As we can see throughout the Halo series, especially during the audio series of Hunt the Truth, ONI manipulates and uses all and everything it can to achieve its desired results. These actions create the inhumane or morally wrong reputation that can be seen throughout the Halo universe, such as Nightfall and Halo 5. But the question now is, will Oni actually ever pay for their crimes? At the beginning of Halo 4, Dr. Halsey is being interrogated for her creation of the Spartan IIs and mentions that she has already been interrogated by two Oni officers prior to the gentleman we see at the time. While Dr. Halsey says during the interrogation and in Halo 5 that the creation of the Spartan IIs was all for the greater good, she is still paying for her crimes. One of the only other instances that we know of where an ONI officer or affiliate is being accused of their crimes is during Hunt the Truth audio series. During the first season of Hunt the Truth, the main character Benjamin Jarreau learns of the backstory of the Spartan IIs while doing a story on the Master Chief. This eventually leads to ONI hunting Benjamin down and his timely meeting with a person named Pharaoh. Pharaoh convinces Benjamin that he must expose Oni for what they are and presents an opportunity to show UNSC top brass some of the atrocities they have committed. While Benjamin does successfully send this message, he is later captured by ONI and taken to what is called Midnight Facility. To give a brief summary, the Midnight Facility is like an Alcatraz of ONI prisons. The people who are kept are going to stay for life and if you were to escape the prison, there would be nowhere to go. In the end, this is where we are left off with Benjamin Jarreau's story and see no implications or actions towards ONI that seem to be the result of Benjamin's message. After reading through some forms and coming across a particular topic that asked if Benjamin was ever going to be released from Midnight Facility or seen again in the Halo franchise, someone proposed that Cortana with her new created and the Guardians that there might be a chance Benjamin will be released or manipulated from the facility. To expand on this, I mean that Benjamin could be used to expose ONI as a tool for dividing and conquering humanity by making them distrust one another. We know that there is an AI at the Midnight Facility and that the Guardians have an EMP-like power. This could possibly shut down all systems. Whether Cortana is able to convince the AI to join her, or the facility does shut down, it seems very likely that if any part of Cortana's army reaches the Midnight Facility, 
Benjamin might return to the spotlight. Knowing that Benjamin now hates O and I, I believe that he would easily be tricked or manipulated by Cortana, or willingly himself expose A and I to all of humanity for their atrocities. Besides this, I really do not see any other way that O and I can truly suffer for its crimes and receive the justice it deserves. I also believe that it would be a very good plotline to follow and make humanity's war with the creative that much harder. Well, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.